bright duty every student matters next traveler what we are going to discuss is about ibn batuta an early globe trotter why this trotter word is been used means he kept on moving to the different countries of the world so his origin was from morocco born in tangier educated in sharia reached sind in 133 sind at the time united india it was the part of india western india then sultan muhammad bin tughlaq appointed him as qazi just at delhi he was in the muhammad bin tughlaq court as he, as a post of chief qazi he was appointed due to a misunderstanding he was imprisoned once the misunderstanding was cleared he was restored to imperial service means that again he has been offered with the same post so this is the miss a short story or the short life sketch of ibn batuta when did he travel 1325 to 1354 so in the 14th century he visited india he was ordered by muhammad bin tughlaq in 1342 to proceed china as the sultan's envoy to the mongol rulers now this is about that ibn batuta he has been given the order to visit china he went to the malabar coast through central india with the help of the central india he reached malabar coast he did not use that the waterways he has used the inland ways the land route he has visited then he went to sri lanka and back to malabar and maldives then he resumed his mission to china he returned to home in 1347 so this is all about the story or the back history of ibn batuta he was traveler was a native of morocco came to delhi 1333 this is the period when he visited to our country is 133 it's very easy to remember after having made extensive tours in egypt palestine arabia and persia why he is known as the globe trotter because of that he has visited the different continents of the world is that palestine arabia and persia he was a great theologian and on his arrival in india muhammad bin tughlaq conferred him the office of the chief qazi what is that the office of the chief qazi was offered by muhammad bin tughlaq to him and ibn batuta had an excellent opportunity of making personal observation of the king's court and its daily working which he recorded in his book and whatever the work was done by him on the daily basis in a routine basis he has recorded in his book he also gives gives us much information about the social condition of the country in the context of our country the entire the social condition has been mentioned by him and he threw the light upon them travels of ibn batuta this is the time period again that his accounts are compared to the marco polo who has also visited china and india he has recorded his observation of people culture beliefs and values he has recorded everything about that the social structure of the people the cultural culture of the people and the beliefs and the values everything he has written he has recorded in his book in his account he also noted that traveling from one place to the other took a long time and was insecure as he has been called as a global trotter or a globe trotter so what he found that his experience was that traveling from one place to another that is a time consuming as well as the journey is not secured he spent several years traveling through north africa west africa west asia and central asia india and 
China. These are the places where he visited. His stories were also recorded. And with these recorded stories, we collect the idea about his visit to India or the different parts of the world. So what he said about that, Ibn Patuta described in detail, Delhi in detail, about the particularly Delhi. He has focused on Delhi. And what he said about that, it is the largest city of the eastern part of the Islamic world. From the, what the Central Asia was considered as the Islamic land. And from there, or there onwards, if we look at on the map, then we fall inside the, on the globe, towards the eastward direction. So what it is written over here, the largest city of the eastern part of the Islamic world, he describes the palace of Muhammad bin Tughlaq. A person who wanted to visit the Sultan had to pass through three lofty gates, which were heavily guarded. So this much that the protection was provided to the king or to the Sultan. He then entered the court of thousand pillars. This is the name of the palace, Court of Thousand Pillars, which was a huge hall supported by polished wooden pillars and was decorated with all kinds of costly materials and furnishings. This was the place at which the Sultan held his public court to reach over there, where this the thousand pillars were there, which were properly guarded by the sentries to reach over there was not a simple task. So this way he has explained about that, the protection of the Sultan and the administrative and the political system of the Sultan. This is all about the travel of Ibn Battuta. This is the all this, the route which is uh, covered in the 1325 to 27 and 30, 13, 32, 30, 32 with the green color. So these are the different colors which is used about that, the travel plan or the countries which has been visited or traveled by Ibn Battuta. Ibn Battuta was also have getting very missed the excite, excitement of the unfamiliar things which he, although he has visited so many parts of the world, but he did not meet with this kind of the items which were used by the Indians. Plants found in India which amazed Ibn Battuta. One was, is about the coconut. He wrote that the nuts of coconut resemble a man's head. How it has been protected. Then it comes about the pan, beetle, he wrote about Pan that the beetle has no fruit and is grown only for the sake of his sake of its leaves. This plant is this plant is not bearing any fruit, but the leaves are very important as that the people in our country they used to have beetle. Then it comes about that it is a system which is Ibn Matuta's description on life in Indian cities. What he has observed, the unfamiliar things like coconut and beetle also he has explained as he did not find this type of the means a crop which is grown. We can say that the fruits and the leaves which has grown in any other part of the world and how nicely the people they are consuming it in India. Then now description on life in Indian cities. Cities full of exciting opportunities. Densely populated and prosperous. Crowded streets with bright and colorful markets. Indian agriculture was very productive, well integrated with inter-Asian networks of trade and commerce. So this is all about that. In the context of the agriculture, he has explained about that, the Indian agricultural system. Bajars, hub of social and cultural activities. The, all the bazaars, what they have, we have the weekly bazaar system and all. At that time also, bazaar hubs of social and cultural activities had mosques and temples for public performances. Both this, the mosque and the temples were there 
and which was used for the public performance. Rich in textile, this is completely in the context of our country, silk, muslin, satin, and were high in demand throughout the world. Basically, a first in the European continent, which was the very developed continent in those days also. We are talking and discussing all these incidents and the instances in the 14th century. So this was that the Indian textiles were very rich. Spider's web. Just now we have discussed about the declaration given by Marco Polo. Spider web. Then the silk, muslin, satin. All these were great in demand in the foreign countries, especially European continent. Another unique feature of this Ibn Battuta, what he found about the Indian postal system. So what it says about the Indian postal system, what he describes, state evidently took measures to encourage merchants. Trade routes supplied with inns and guest houses. Amazed by the efficiency of postal system. So this is now about that, how this system, postal system, means uh, given a complete idea about that, how it was functioning. So even Batuta, what he has explained about the postal system, state evidently took measures to encourage merchants. Trade routes supplied with inns and guest houses, means where the merchants, for the, after this, their long travel from one place to another, they can at least take a place where they can take rest. Amazed by the efficiency of postal system. Allowed merchants to send information and also remit credits across long distance. This support was done by the postal department. The merchants can send their information because of that they have a check post. Posts are been maintained. The towers has been built. Coming to explain you about in more detail about this, the Ibn Battuta describes the postal system which prevailed in those days in India. In those days, it was only in India. Then Tughlaq made arrangements for the post being carried quickly from one part of the country to the another. How quick this work was? Then this was done by relays of horses. Means from one post to another. One horse is not supposed to take the information until reached till their destination. It was not like that. So what was the what was the system followed? This is about that the relays of horses, or even more efficiently and quickly by runners. The individual person was also been appointed who they can collect the information and they move very fast, run very fast to reach till the post which has been assigned to that particular individual. Then by runners who were posted every mile or so in towers which was which were built for the purpose. Means the towers were built. If suppose a runner is just collecting the information and running to reach till the towers or the post where it has been mentioned over there, then from there onwards it is the duty of the another runner or the another person or the horses to carry that information to the destination. So this is the very unique system which was followed during this the period. What observation was may say done by Ibn Battuta, what he observed in the society. The runner continue, continually changed a bell as he ran so that man on the next relay may be able to see him from the tower and get ready to take his burden. Means that towers are also been constructed. So who will be the next runner? They have to keep ready. So with this runner, one different kinds of different kind of bell is also been ringing. Might be either in there, this uh, stick, or somewhere they are using the bell. So the nearby the tower, the person get alert. So he or she can collect the information. Actually, he she was not allowed only in those days. So that next person can collect the information and he can move very fast to reach till the destination. So this is about that the postal system. This also allowed merchants to send information and also remit credit across long distance, allowed to dispatch goods 
required at short notice took only 50 days to reach delhi from ka sindh delhi is in the heart of the country and towards the western side they can reach within the 50 days the news reports of spies would reach the sultan through postal system in just 5 days so this way the in if it is related to the information then it takes 50 days when it is related to the spy or the in uh, personal information related to the administration or political political system then it is supposed to reach within 5 days so this way the efficient postal system was working what was been observed by ibn batuta this is the ulak the horse post dawa the food post these are the two names which were used for the postal system other than that what he found about the evidence for slavery provided by ibn batuta slavery was also very prominent not only in our country but throughout the world slaves like any other commodity were openly sold in the market can you imagine about that slaves who were that human beings and these human beings just like as a commodity like goods they have been openly sold in the markets they were also regularly exchanged as gifts means that the family they are exchanging their slaves as a gift also when even batuta reached sindh he purchased horses camels and slaves just like as the other commodities even batuta purchased horses camels as well as slaves he wanted to offer them as gifts to sultan muhammad bin tughlaq why he has purchased all these things because he was supposed to visit to sultan muhammad bin tughlaq so when he met with this sultan first time then he can offer all these things to sultan when he reached to multan he presented slaves and horses with almonds and raisins to the governor of multan at the provincial level this multan was a province a state and it was ruled by the governor the head of this states or head of these states were provinces were known as the governors so this not only that when this uh, ibn batuta reached to multan he presented slaves and horses with almonds and raisins to the governor of multan ibn batuta says the muhammad bin tughlaq was so happy with the sermon of preacher named nasiruddin that he gave him a hundred thousand tanks of two hundred slaves so this way the people human being who they were considered as slaves they have been sold they have been offered as a gift to the sultan so this is the condition of that the one particular group of slaves who they were poor very very poor they were not having the very means good health health status is also not very good those persons were being considered as slaves and they have been sold in the market just like as other commodities then it comes about that the evidence of slavery provided by what are the evidences which were provided by him the sultan employed female slaves in his service and also to keep watch on his novels so as a work of spy was also done by this female slaves the slaves were engaged for domestic work but they were given very low wages even batuta found their services particularly indispensable for carrying women a palanquins or dola so this way it was very indispensable while he was observing that the women were also just carrying palanquins or dola so that was very indispensable work done by the women slave
Now, this is the categorization, differentiation done among the slaves. Female slaves in service of sultans. These female slaves were particularly appointed in nearby the sultan for his services. Experts in dance and music. These female slaves, they were having expertise in dance and music. Then second category, slaves also employed as spies to keep watch on the nobles, to bring the report and it is to be delivered by them to the king, to the sultan. He found their service indispensable for carrying men or women on dulas. Price of slaves, especially women for domestic labor, were very low. It is actually about that for women, as a domestic labor, they were sold in a very low wages, very low price, then affordable by most families. So as they were, these slaves were available at the very cheap rate. So most of the families at that time, they can avail this facility. They can afford to purchase the slaves. Women laborers. Women laborer was crucial in both agricultural and non-agricultural production. Both were at both the places. Their work is, their labor is very crucial. Women from merchant families participated in commercial activities. Everywhere, if as a laborer also they are working, means that if suppose the women they belong from the good merchant's family, there they can they are taking help, they are giving their help and these merchants' families, they are taking help from this, the uh, women members. Therefore, it seems unlikely that women were confined. What it is written? That women were confined to the private spaces of their homes. Now their space, their area has been confined. Inside the doors, they are leading their life. Patuta mentions with horror the sense of a woman warning her, burning her, herself in the funeral pyre of her husband with great beating of drums. So this is the explanation about the, the sati system, which was mispracticed in our society and he was very much very surprised. He felt that the, he was frightened with this horror. He was in the complete horror. At the sense of woman burning herself in the funeral pyre of her husband, Great beating of drums. So her, this, this wailing sound should not come out. So the drums were beaten at a very loud sound. Then we are, this is all about that, the sati system which was practiced in our country and one of the most important social customs. Other than this, it was very difficult according to this Ibn Batuta. Permission from the Sultan had to be taken for the performance of the Sati. Now, what the question has been put up by him that if suppose any of the male member dies from a family, his or her wife, before to perform the Sati, they must have to take the permission of Sultan. That he felt and he has also mentioned in his book. So, this is all about that the societal structure, what he observed. He means Ibn Batuta, what he observed, he has explained in his book. After Akbar, now coming to discuss, during the period of Jahangir, who were the travelers who visited India and what were their accounts? What he, they have given their record about the Indian society, what they found, something in a different way as it was not practiced on their own land. So this is during the period of Jahangir. His period is mentioned over here from 1605 to 1627. A large number of Europeans, they visited India during this period. During this period means that during the period of Jahangir. Thomas Rowe, in his journal, he has written about that, what exclusive things he found in the India. In his journal, he deals almost exclusively with the court life and political intrigues 
of that time what he found during the period of jahangir edward terry the another traveler who accompanied thomas roe to the court of jahangir he wrote an account of his visit to india and his book which was named as voyage to east india is very important source of information for men and events in contemporary india so these two thomas roe and his contemporary both of them edward terry both of them they visited india during the period of jahangir and this the book written by thomas roe was named as journal what he found the exclusive things in the court life or in the court of jahangir he explained about all such things then edward terry he has written in his book voice to east india he also explained some of the exclusive things which he found which were practiced in india after that this comes about the next one james hawkins james hawkins who lived at mughal court from 1608 to 1611 he left records of his experiences in india and also wrote about the habits of jahangir not only that he has written or explained about that how the mughal court was practicing during the period of jahangir but the experience what he wrote about that the habits of jahangir the etiquette of the court the system of administration and the social condition of the people of the country most of the travelers in their account they are missing the part of the people of the country the common people what is practiced actually in a large scale in the society is missing by the many of the travelers but william hawkins even he has written about the social condition of the people in our country